are you? Is anybody still here? Sandra? Jeff? Sandra? Jeff? Sandra? 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 <laughs> This is a Patreon exclusive interview, Horror 365. I am the host that covers the most, Jimmy J, alongside with the South Jersey slasher himself, South Jersey Jason. But today, the special guest of the evening. Well, you may know her from the movie makers. You may know her from the best soap opera of all time, Loving. Or you may know her from Friday the 13th, part two. She is Lauren Marie Taylor. Miss Taylor, how was you today? Awesome to have you on. Oh, my God. You know, I'm just like right now, little butterflies. I'm excited that you're on with us right now, me and me and Brian, these two guys, and taking the time here. Uh, but I got to ask you, I ask everybody this. What was your introduction into the horror genre? Oh, wow. Um, Jeep, Jeepers. Well, first of all, I grew up across the street from a cemetery. Oh, nice. So that's kind of like <laughs> it's like built into my DNA to be creeped out about everything, especially the dark. Um but when I was a kid, there was this show. I'm oh God, I'm dating myself. Um, no, seriously, I'm dating myself. But there was a show in the um, 60s, in the late 60s and in the early 70s. It was called um, Chiller Theater. Mm -hmm. and there was another one called Creature Feature. And then, of course, there was um, uh, Scooby-Doo and all those ghosts. And there was Abbott and Costello and their haunted adventures. So that was really the stuff that I watched, the, the old Frankensteins, yeah, the black and white Draculas, you know, classics. those old movies. Yeah, classics, exactly. So that's how that's how I got introduced to it. And then, um, yeah. yeah. Very nice. Um, those are, you know, those are my, that's my favorite because that's what I grew up on as I was a kid, you know, and sadly, you don't see like the old Universal Monster movies anymore, you know, so yeah. when I have kids, that's, I, that's how I want to start them off, you know, start them off on how I was started off and then get into the slashers. What age? Yeah, like the blob and stuff. Yeah, like that. yes. What's creepier than a bunch of jelly chasing you <laughs> where you're sitting in a movie theater and it comes through the vents and it rolls around and eats you and gets bigger? I mean, I didn't eat jelly for years after I saw the blob. <laughs> no, I'm straight peanut butter. That's it. Peanut butter sandwiches. No jelly for me. <laughs> and um, what age did you begin to act? Um, it wasn't until I was in high school. Uh, so I guess around 16-ish uh, or maybe okay. a little uh, younger, maybe... 14. Yeah, I was doing like school plays and stuff like that. Okay, and so it wasn't like a requirement, like you had to take an elective, you wanted to join like the drama club? Yeah, I was actually very shy when I was a kid. My grandmother, I grew up with my grandparents and my grandmother used to call me sourpuss because I never smile. <laughs> I, I really, thanks, thanks. You never smile. Like, Every time I see you, you smile. smiling. I know, I tried to like reverse, you know, my reputation as a child. Uh, no, if, you, if I could post, I'm going to post some pictures, but I was always, you know, just sourpuss and miserable, just always kind of like, yeah. And, but I was also very shy, you know, and when I got to high school, it was like this shy business is not working. And the only way to get over it was to do something where, you know, number one, I wasn't myself in front of people. And number two, there were all kinds of crazy people around me. And that was the theater department. So I joined the theater group, you know, just figuring I'll maybe meet people like me and just have a good time. And that's what wound up happening. And then did you take that into college or um, yeah. did you just, okay. So uh, theater was your major in college? 
Yeah, it was. And then um, I also got my degree in childhood education, too. So. Oh, oh, very nice. Very nice. I got to oh, ask you. I'm sorry to cut you off, Brian. Uh, what was your first play? Your first act? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, it, it was. A, gosh, it was a show called Indians. Um, I think I was a freshman. Maybe I was a sophomore. No, I guess. I, no, I was a sophomore. And they just needed a girl to be tied to the stake. <laughs> my brother was the stage manager and he's like and eh, my sister will do it and he goes hey do you want to do this he said you wanted to meet people and it was at the all boys school next door to my school <laughs> and i was like all right Duh. <laughs> like that no not an inkling of anything and then i joined i joined after that i joined the theater club but it was all i had to do was just stand there and scream and scream <laughs> Yeah, well, there you go. And that, you know, led you into some other movies. I mean, when I was acting, I was just like the tree in the play, you know, just (laughs) just had a. You have an extensive background, Brian. I I do. I do. So uh, your first big break came in 1980 uh, when you appeared on TV show Rhine Soap and you're in it for three episodes. But the show itself lasted for 15 years. Um, And when I was looking at the cast members, I don't. I'm not too familiar with a lot of them, but one name did stand out to me, uh, Earl Hinman, who would later go on to be in Home, Home Improvement with Tim Allen. Oh, see, I, yeah. <laughs> see, that's why I'm the researcher. <laughs> yeah. So, well, before that, though, before even, I think it was before doing that, um, I was um, fresh out of college. No, it was after that. So I guess I was doing Neighbors. I don't know. It, it was right around the time when I was doing Neighbors, I was also understudying an off-Broadway show. Uh, it was a four-person show called Album by the playwright David Rimmer. And in the cast was um, Sam Robards, Jason mm. Robards and Lauren Bacall's son, um, Keith Gordon, Jenny Wright, who went on to do uh, The Doors movie, the Jim Morrison movie, and Kevin Bacon. Wow, and you said Keith Gordon? Yeah. Oh, Christine. He was in yeah. Jaws too. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah, awesome. That's a cash right there. From that yeah. Show is uh, did pretty well. So, how was like you know working with a pre-famous like Kevin Bacon? I mean, we were just a bunch of New York City kids. Yeah. You know, just wow. doing our thing, and that's really awesome. You know, he was really big in the New York uh, City theater scene. You know, I was the understudy, but then I wound up taking over the role in Chicago when Jennifer Grey fell on her 18th birthday and got a concussion and was out of the show for a week oh wow yeah so i uh i was flown to chicago and stayed there for a week and came back and they said you know go audition they're looking for a girl to play john belushi's daughter and neighbors and i was still under studying the you know off broadway in the same show and i went and i got it and so what yeah so speaking of neighbors now i Rewatched it the other night just to familiarize myself and you worked with a great it was a small cast but great bunch of talented actors and actresses what was that like your first big movie working with Dan Aykroyd John Belushi Kathy Moriarty like tell us that was another (laughs) cast right there yeah it was well you know it was funny because I was young you know I was not not young you know it's whatever I'm not gonna tell you well you probably all know (laughs) I guess I was 19 when I was filming it or so and um because I had never really gotten into Saturday Night Live I wasn't all goo goo and gaga eyed over uh Danny and John so it was just like eh, you know hanging out I mean they took me shopping for the wardrobe down in the East Village and I knew the East Village because I'm in New York New York City From, from Manhattan I don't mean to cut you from Manhattan or the outer boroughs I, I grew up in the Bronx, but then I went oh, okay. to school in Manhattan. But anyway, so I, then when I uh, left college, because I was working so much, I was just like never there. So when I left college, I got my own place on 85th Street on the east side. So I just, I would live there for a few years. But anyway, uh, they took me shopping for all those cool clothes that I wore. And yeah. Like, you know, yeah, and character. And, <laughs> you know, it was just, it, it didn't occur to me that I was with, John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, like with my castmates. We used to put 20 of them in there. We'd activate the speed rollers, turn on the master host circuits, and that'd be it. Vic Sex Liquid Lunch. <laughs> Good night, everybody. I'm going to bed. I bet you never seen a pair of these before. <laughs> Take a snap. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like a peach. 
What are those? They're my panties. They're edible. <laughs> edible? Hey, wow. The wonders of modern petro technology. Where did you get them? At school. All the kids have them. Oh, I'm tasty. They come in four flavors. Great idea. <laughs> yeah, four flavors. Hey, Earl, you want some of your daughter's panties? They come in four flavors. Banana, peach, mint, and of course, cherry. <laughs> Good night, ladies. I got a question. I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to cut you off, Miss Taylor. But who was it that picked out the edible panties? Was that Dan Aykroyd or was that John <laughs> Belushi? Well, I can tell you a couple stories there. Uh oh, well, well, let's hear them. Forever. Um, it, it was a mutual decision um, between <laughs> the three of us. He was like, "Hey, Did you know, Aykroyd I have get- this- should we really get them? And I said, yeah, let's really get them. So he goes, what flavor should we get? I said, I don't know. You, you guys are the gun- ones who are going to be eating them. <laughs> <laughs> did Ackroy look at you when you said that with that eye like he did in Dragnet? Oh, yeah. that <laughs> eyebrow up? Yes, he did, actually. Yeah, because oh, wow. your, your character was like the total opposite of Vicky. You know, like she comes in like this, like, you know, a, like a, basically the punk was the punk scene was popular then. And that's your character. But then like halfway through your performance she's wearing just like a regular dress looking like a goody goody two shoes and then she leaves the movie as the punk again leaving with the the really um the the tow truck driver yes yeah <laughs> and i have to say like the the other tow truck driver like the mechanic i'm like man this guy looks familiar and then i'm looking at the cast I forget his name offhand, but he would later go on to play Sweet Chuck in the Police Academy movies. And oh, he really? was, yeah, and he was a writer for Saturday Night Live. So they just aged him because he had like he had makeup on. Yes, that's right. Yes, okay, yes, I know. You're, now I now I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like going it's like going in a time capsule for you, you know, because it's you know, it, oh, man, I just can't believe like you know your first big role and you had these comedy legends, you know, and it's forever stamped in movie history you know yeah and whenever i talk about it to uh, people like you know if i'm at a party or not that we've been in any parties in the past year but you know if i'm at a party or just hanging out with people or you know i talk about i talk about it and i say it was like the best time of my life it oh yeah was just, but i, I, mean, I feel it, it was just they would come and pick me up at the theater you know at the end of the night because you know as an understudy you do you wear many hats backstage you also do stage managing and stuff like that and sound editing and they would wait by the door and just swoop me away and we'd go out all night and then we'd <laughs> film the next day. And then that night I would be back at the theater and go out all night. I swear, I don't think I slept for three months. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. And you were so, still able to perform at top level over there. I mean, going out all night. Or I guess when you're younger, that's it. You know, even when I was younger, you would just break night and then go to school or do what you yeah. had to do, go to work. Yeah. Well, I feel like the edible panty scene Maybe that's why they wrote your character to have, you know, those <laughs> brown panties for the next one. You got typecast. <laughs> Actually, I did Friday the 13th first. Okay. Then I did Neighbors. So maybe it was Belushi's way of saying, those ugly brown underwear, you deserve <laughs> these now, honey. I felt bad for his character, you know, because his character was like the polar opposite of how his performances were, you know. And um, his character, you, you, from the, the minute you or introduced to him, you already feel bad for his character, you know? And like just the chemistry him and Dan Aykroyd had, you, you'll, you'll never get that's that awesome. again. I mean, we had that with David Spade and Chris Farley, but yeah. it's, it's very rare um, nowadays. So let's talk about Friday the 13th. <laughs> so do you remember how like you auditioned for it? Like, how did you hear about it for your agent? Yeah, yeah. Um, back then when you were younger, you had a, a manager and that person acts as the liaison with the smaller agencies who get the phone calls from the producers or the directors. So I've been doing a lot of TV commercials and a lot of jingles at the time. And the casting director, Meg Simon, had been the casting director on many of the commercials that I had booked. So when it came up through the agent to my manager, they're like, oh, we have an audition for Lauren Marie, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's with Meg Simon. It's for, you know, a horror movie. You know, I didn't know anything about it. And I went in and was like, hey, how you doing? Oh, good. How are you doing? You know, blah, blah. Well, this is kind of weird auditioning for a film. Yeah. She's like, yeah, yeah, it'll be good for you. So I auditioned and I got it. You know, I I don't even think I had a call back for it. Um, And I got it right away. And yeah, that's how I got it. You know? <laughs> now, did you know at the time it was a sequel to Friday the 13th or did they call it like a different movie? You they, know? 
Oh, I have my little photo album here. They oh, nice. Actually, uh -oh. See, I, I finally found that I keep talking about it and talking about it to people. And I'm like, I don't know where this thing is. I, I'm, I swear I'm going to find that those ugly pants and that ugly sweater. <laughs> but this is the um, this is a picture of the um, uh, of the script. Oh, cover, wow. Wow. Called Jason. Nice. And um, yeah, so that's what it was. And then once we got it and they said, well, uh, we're going to have you watch the first version of this. And we're all like, OK. And they're like, well, this is a part two, but we're naming it Jason. And I was like, oh, you know, we were like, I, I don't care, whatever. <laughs> and so we watched part one because I think it had also just come out mm -hmm, where, mm -hmm, where yeah. we were making it. Yep. Yeah. So and then like and then they changed it because I think they realized, OK, well, the reviewers may not be crazy about this or what have you. But a lot of people want to see this. So let's keep the name and make it a part two. And then the rest is part three, four up to it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who did you bring to the premiere? I you remember? <laughs> you didn't go to the premiere. You didn't go to the premiere. <laughs> wow. No, we had a um, we had um, uh, like a screening. At okay. Like a Directors Guild type of place, yeah. a little private theater. But then I went to see it by myself, um, in the audience, and I remember just. I don't remember. It was a big movie theater, though. And I remember sitting there and there were all these people there to see it, you know, and they're like, oh, oh, and they're all, you know, they're all making <laughs> the sounds. And I'm just sitting there going, oh, my God. And I'm just, <laughs> like slinking down in my yep. seat like that. And then when the underwear thing, I just rolled, as I always do, I rolled my eyes and, you know, yeah. So when we were first introduced to your character, Vicky, you appeared to be like a nice girl, you I know. But then as time went on and you had more interactions with Mark, we knew what was going on, you know, in your, <laughs> your flirtatious ways. Knew what was happening there. Yeah. So, <laughs> and after a while, you know, he finally gave in. And unfortunately, Jason had other plans. Um, I guess Jason could be the original blocker, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, can you, we talked about this a couple of days ago, but could you tell us about like what they did for your death scene? Like there could have been more to it. Yeah, you know, it, they really, everybody talks about how that's, I want to say the most painful to watch, but a lot of people say that was, it was just painful to watch because it took so long for, um, you know, the knife to come down and stab mm -hmm. her, you know, in her heart or wherever he stabs her. They didn't film any extra stuff like that. Um, uh, it was really just, you know, the shock you know, of getting a knife, you know, slashed across your thigh and blood and just the shock of seeing something with a thing over his head coming at you, not seeing a face, you know, it's like, it, it's like you realize they're not playing a joke on you, you know, Jeff and, um, and what's her name, Sandra are not pe playing a joke on you. Right. That's a dead body. And oh, by the way, this dude's hanging behind me, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. The, so the when Jason comes out of like the, under the blankets, was that like, uh, were you in the room when that happened? So was your reaction like, or was that like shot separately? Um, yeah, at that time they did not have two cameras rolling. They okay. would have that, you know, and then I was like here behind the camera um, and he's coming. So the camera's here, I'm here. And then he comes out of the bed, you know, you know, like at me. So they shot that. And then when they reversed the camera so that you saw, you know, Bill Randolph hanging with all mm -hmm. the blood and everything like that. When they reversed the camera angle, uh, Jerry Wallace, who was doing the, I don't want to say stunt because it wasn't a stunt. It was, he was just filling in. Filling in, yeah. As Jason, when he... <laughs> he repeated the action of what the camera saw of coming out of the bed. Okay. So, yeah. And we did that a few times, you know, long shot, more close up. Then the, the, the blood capsule wouldn't burst. And Steve Viner was getting pissed at me. He was like, Lauren, bite down harder. I'm like, but you said, not make it look like, a, and I was just like, he said, he, said, I said, he said not to make it look like I was actually biting down. I really don't have, I mean, I, I'm a vegetarian for a few years now. I get my teeth cut soft. I don't know. And he just looked at me and he's just like, bite down harder. And I went, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was more terrified of Steve Miner and right. you know, him not, you know, liking what I was doing or thinking that I wasn't listening to him um, than I was of the knife coming at me and the yeah. sad head. So even though you didn't share any scenes with Warrington Gillette or Steve Dash, did you have any interactions with them on set? 
Only with Warrington. Um, okay. I mean, with Steve Dash, it, when we had to go back and film the dead bodies scene, mm -hmm. uh, and that was the coming through the window business, yeah. you know, then I saw, you know, oh, hi, how, you know, how are you? I mean, he was around, but we didn't have like, you know, a rapport of any sort. Okay. Right. He was the stunt guy. Yeah. Um, whereas Warrington stayed at the camp for the most part hung around, you know, chuck, yuck, 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 yuck. I mean, he really didn't have to be there. <laughs> right. Um, because, you know, anybody can put a sack over their head. But he would just come and hang out. I think I have a picture. <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, somewhere that's picture awesome. Again. But anyway, see, yeah, yeah, so he would hang around at the camp. Um, oh, there's a fun picture. <laughs> like, you know, they would put the makeup on him. Here's him. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. Oh, man. That so, is you know, so awesome. They would awesome. put the makeup on him um, and get him ready to do all the um all the different um effects oh i have a whole i have pictures of um him in the process of getting the makeup put on oh too. wow we got we got same, hollywood yeah. history right here yeah this is history oh, and you know it's not like pictures like yeah physical uh, do you see that one no nope, we gotta go up a little bit more oh there you go oh wow that is really wow. awesome yeah and then carl ah putting even more of it on him oh yeah so that was kind of cool that That's awesome. Have, yeah. You have like, you know how much those photos would go for. <laughs> Holy mackerel! You have you have history right history there. Right there. It yeah. belongs in a museum. Wait, what's that? That's Warrington. Oh, wow. oh, now okay. I see. Wow, nice. Wow. Yeah, that's in the um. That's in the, the lodge, you know, that's right as you are about to go up the steps. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Because you, was it your body that was getting dragged down the steps? Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I have a picture of that too, by the way. Nice. Oh, man. Oh, wow. It's not very clear, but you could tell those poor white moccasins, which were mine, by the way, got that fake blood all over it. Um, was there anyone, like any cast members that you became friends with like while film i'm sure you became friends with a lot of them but you were like inseparable like while filming and hung out and you know had fun um, wow um i mean well that's weird because we all kind of just hung out okay we okay. all just kind of hung out um any cool stories yeah. uh from behind the scenes any who you can any cool stories you can share with us from behind the scenes of filming any yeah. pranks or anything like that well there were pranks i mean there were no friends with benefits although some of us had our suspicions about two people, but I will not name names. <laughs> oh, come. we got the juice. Suspicions. What is it? <laughs> they were suspicions only. I mean, I had a huge crush on Warrington. Huge okay. crush on him. We went out on one date when we were all back in New York and we were just like, nah. <laughs> do, you nah. Keep, do you keep in touch with any of them? Like, do you talk to them on a regular basis throughout the year? Not just at I conventions? To, actually, believe it or not, I talk with Kirsten. Okay. Kirsten Baker, she's out in California. I am um, do a lot of um, back and forth with Warrington. Okay. And Bill and I, Bill Randolph mm -hmm. and I, we, you know, cause he's right here in New York city. Right. Yeah. So yeah, we, we go back and forth. We'll text and whatnot, you know, family stuff really, you know. Okay. That, that's awesome to have yeah. friendship for 40 years, you know, that's, yes. that's really cool. So speaking yeah, of you yeah. can pick up where, where you left off with, yeah. um, with them. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of 40 years, last year was the 40th anniversary of the franchise itself. And then this year, this April is the 40th anniversary of your movie. Yeah. What does it feel like to be a part of a franchise that has this long lasting power? Um, it, it's funny because I, it, I never thought about it before. It just didn't occur to me of how incredible it was. Oh, there's my husband in the background. Is he, was, I, is he I, making I something? Or Shoot is he built I yeah, don't know. Is that, is um, it, hun, hold that, it up. <laughs> he was Bostwick in Girls' Night Out. The geeky guy in Girls' Night Out with me. Really? Oh, what? Yeah. Okay. Hun, say hi. <laughs> hey. <laughs> he goes. What's up, bud? That's funny because he, he just popped in there. As a, he got a nice little cameo. We got the dog in there, too. What, yeah. You have a dog? He's I didn't even know you had a dog. Overseas. There he is. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's making a roast. I got him a smoker for his birthday. Oh, very Wait, nice. Whoa, whoa, what are we making? What, I love what time a roast. Dinner? A roast, I know, yeah. I know that. You're, 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 you're closer to her than I am. You'll be Hold there before up. I get there. Hold it up. So Boswick, what are we making for dinner? <laughs> That's awesome. Here, yeah. here it comes, here it comes. Woo! Oh, look at that. Oh, oh man. man. We got some of that, some mashed potatoes. What do you got? You got That's a rump it. roast? Is it a chuck roast? Yeah, it's, it, it's my rump. It's a rump mm. roast. Oh, very nice. <laughs> no, it's a 
<laughs> Get your mind out the gutter, people. <laughs> it, it, it's always in the gutter. No, it's <laughs> it's his brisket thing. Ah, uh, very nice. Uh, uh, now you got me hungry, and I got to do yard work after this. <laughs> yeah, I have my my spring cleaning list, and I'm still working on it. Um, but anyway, but getting back to the question, yeah, like I said, I had no idea that it, the franchise was this big until Warrington called me one day out of the blue and said, hey, are you in the city? And I was like, yeah, I'm in the city. He goes, why don't you come over to the Javits Center where, I, oh no, it was at the, one of those hotels at the time. It was a convention. And I said, well, what for? And he said, well, Bill and I are here, you know, and we're, you know, meeting and greeting, you know, and signing stuff. And I said, what are you talking about? He's like, yes, get over here. So I went over there. You know, and I'm walking through and people just start staring at me. I'm like, do I have like boogers on my face or something? <laughs> Why are these people staring at me? I really no clue. And I'm walking because, you know, I mean, I'd gotten used to getting stared at after being on the soap opera for many years. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this wasn't a mall. Usually I get recognized at the mall from the soap opera at that time period that, you know, Warrington yeah. called me. So I get up there and I go up the escalator and I'm like, where? I'm like, where are you? You know, he goes, well, we're in this corner, blah, blah, just look for the banner. So I go there and I see this line of people. I'm like, what the heck? You know, and he goes, get over here. And people are like, oh my God, it's Vicky. And I'm, I said, what is it? And he goes, you know, and so he told me, he goes, you know, they have these conventions, you should start going. And I said, well, I've never heard of them. So I basically crashed that one, kind of like when I crashed your uh, Instagram <laughs> live feed last week. Uh, so I kind of crashed that one and... I didn't go to another one for a few years until I got a phone call from someone, you know, and said, Hey, you want to go? And Stacy and I've been together ever since basically. So, um, what year around was that where you crashed the convention? If you remember. Um, Olivia was still in high school. So I'm going to say 2000. Eight. Okay. And so, yeah, I guess uh, Monster Mania, uh, I attend that every so often when they're in Cherry Hill. They've been around since like the early 2000s and there was conventions way before that. So yeah, yeah so that's, that's you know, um, that's a question we ask all the um, stars that we have on here about their you know, first experience. I don't mean to cut you off, Brian, yeah. but you, you mentioned the soap opera, uh, Miss Taylor. Loving, that was the name of it, correct? It was uh, 1983, 1995. Yeah, that was my mother's favorite soap opera. And actually, <laughs> she had me watching it when I was young. I don't remember a lot of it. All I remember was at the end, everybody was dying. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. So I was right. Yeah. And I, she would watch it. It was like a half an hour, like I think 12 to 1230 mm -hmm. or 1230 to yeah. one. And was that it? it was, yeah, that was it all the time. man. so I didn't even know that you were on that soap opera. What was it like, though, being on like compared to like being in a movie versus a soap opera? What was the difference? Like, what was it like? Oh. Oh, there's a huge difference, huge, huge difference. Um, but just in terms of filming, you know, when you're doing a movie, you'll do maybe a page and three quarters a day, you know, cause you gotta get angles, you gotta get reaction shots, you gotta get master shots, you know, you gotta get establishing shots. So, you know, you're doing a maybe a couple pages a day. Soap operas, you're doing an entire show every day, sometimes two shows. And in my case, right before I went on maternity leave each time, I filmed six weeks worth of shows oh, wow. so that I would be on at least once or twice a week. And it got to the point with my last child, because they didn't write Olivia and they didn't write that pregnancy. And it got to the point where I was confusing the episodes and we had to constantly cut and they say, <laughs> Lauren, Lauren, wait, that's not for another three episodes. I'd be like, okay, you're right, you're right. But I had to memorize all this stuff and do it before I left on maternity leave. But on the soap opera, you have multiple cameras and they're moving and they're moving around you. You know, they're on these like gigantor or, you know, morning <laughs> Will Robinson yeah. type of wheelie. <laughs> things like that, you know, like in, uh, you know, that, you know, that show. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Boston <laughs> Space. Yes, lots. <laughs> yes, loved that show when I was a kid, the original. Uh, so anyway, so they're moving the cameras around and then they fly to the next set, you know, so it's you're doing the soap opera in real time. You know, you've got your dry rehearsal in a rehearsal room before any hair and makeup. Then you go up and you block it on the actual set. Then you break for lunch. Then you get your wardrobe on. Then you go into a dress rehearsal. Then you get wow. notes. 
sometimes you get edits. Sometimes you get new pages thrown in that you have to like memorize this is right away. Very taxing. It sounds like on you mentally and physically almost yeah. like, is it an all day it process? It's a whole all day process. And if you're doing a wedding scene or a party scene or any special scene, you go into the evening and into overtime. And then you got to haul ass, pardon me, <laughs> the next day and get to work on time. So yeah, yeah. And I mean, I did that up until the day before I delivered. And in one case, wow. I had my, wow. I went to work in labor and I wow. made an announcement over the PA system. I said, hi guys, if we're going to get this rehearsal in, you got to do it now because I'm pretty sure I'm in labor. <laughs> and I wound up having the baby three hours later. Oh my gosh. Wow. You think they would have wow. wrote it into the script if you would have had it on set? <laughs> I think they would have filmed it. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. So, so yeah, the difference between a soap opera and a movie is just huge, but you really have an appreciation for the medium. And that's why now when I go on some sets, sometimes I'll not to diss any young or new people who are new to acting, mm -hmm. but, um, the, the amount of preparation that you need when you're on a soap opera or anything where you're just constantly moving is huge. You've got to really have your act together. You've got to have your stuff memorized. You've got to be ready and on at all time and ready to be able to change direction. And I see a lot of um, new actors, you know, not, the, you know, you know, but a lot of new actors are not memorizing their lines mm -hmm. you know, or mm -hmm. they're not investing a hundred percent, you know, and I just, you know, observe from back here. So it's like know. anything nowadays. Unfortunately, I feel like everybody's just become more lazy. They're not putting in the work. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta put in, you gotta put in the work and anything. I mean, look, he's spending all day making a brisket out there, you know, and he, he, look at him. Like, he looks like he's very hard to work right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at, man. Least, at least he's not in his hammock. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Or right walking here. around in his underwear, you know, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That would have been a treat. I would have asked him, are those edible? I mean, people want to know. <laughs> Don't get him started. I'll, he'll never leave yeah, me alone you know, for the um, rest of the day. I actually had the opportunity um, to work with uh, Dave Brown of the fan film. His name was Jason. And he, we partnered together to make a uh, another fan film, a short 12 minute movie. And I was there with him from beginning to end as far as casting the actors and actresses. And it's amazing to see that firsthand, the, the, the practice that you do, like as far as just like that, you can go into character. You might be joking around, but when they say action, you're like this whole different person, mm -hmm. you know? I could never do that, especially if, it, I mean, maybe in a dramatic role, but in a comedy role, I, I wouldn't be able to do it because I'd be cracking up the whole time. But it was just re it was just awesome to see that side of you know behind the camera. So uh, it's awesome what you guys do. Yeah, it's it 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 is pretty cool when you step back and think about it. Like sometimes I'll you know be running and it'll be after I talk to you know you guys or whatever. Like I'm gonna go out for a hike after this um, <laughs> with the poor dog, <laughs> the neurotic dog. <laughs> and um, you know sometimes I'll think about it and I'll just replayed in my mind and go oh yeah you know just remembering how cool the experience was and yeah. you know I, I always call it my previous life because <laughs> it's such a different world to be in in that what's the matter oh sorry my dog is whining That's no it. no worries <laughs> so um we got one more question and then we're going to change the uh the way of the interview after loving ended what did you do after that um, I kept doing TV commercials. Okay. Um, I kept doing TV commercials and then I hosted a little uh, blurb type of show on the network on ABC that basically talked about who was going to get killed next. And I would enter them. They expanded it, the format. Mm -hmm. So it was just a little daytime show that I did for ABC where I would go out to General Hospital and interview those oh, wow. actors out there and, you know, just locally. So I did a lot of interviewing of people. And then that springboarded into the, um, the craft show on Lifetime. It was called Handmade by Design. So, so. Okay. <laughs> nice. Well, look, look at those legs. Mm, I, I, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's not even paying attention. He's just looking at your husband. I'm looking at. Going. I'm looking at the smoke coming out of smokers. smokers. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> oh, listen. You know what? Listen, we might just make it over for dinner. Just tell him we'll be there. That's it. I'll, I'll bring the wine, red or white or both. It doesn't matter. Yeah, a little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But I want to switch gears a little bit. 
Miss Taylor, I have a segment on this show called the two minute drill. And what Uh this is basically, right? I ask you random questions and you give us the first thing that comes to your mind or, you know, the answer, your answer. All right. So you ready? I hope so. (laughs) I think you'll do good. You're you're, you're good at that. I do. And we're going to go three, two, one. Favorite horror icon? Shark and Jaws. (laughs) <laughs> favorite slasher um psycho weapon of choice a knife to remake or not to remake to not remake stranded in the woods who got you back uh my dog <laughs> <laughs> uh, leprechaun versus chucky who wins leprechaun last great slasher film Friday 13th part two. There you go. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Favorite psychological horror movie? Silence of the Lambs. Mm. Favorite horror movie quote? Oh, Wendy, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Scariest horror movie you've seen? Silence of the Lambs. But yeah. that's not really a horror film, is it? It's psychological yeah. horror. Yeah. yeah. Best horror voice? Best horror voice? Oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank on that one. Um, Jack Nicholson. Okay. Finish the line. All work and no play. Makes Jack a dull boy. There it is. <laughs> Favorite zombie flick? I don't have one. Okay. Universal monster of choice? Godzilla. Best Univ- horror franchise? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's a, that's, a, that's a no-brainer right now. Favorite, favorite Halloween, if there is one? Um... Um, uh, the recent one where she has all those guns. Oh, yeah, yep, 2018. Oh, nice, yeah, yep. 2018. Yeah. Best horror movie score or theme? Oh, um, The Shining. Mm. Yes, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Yeah. What word would you add to the end of this quote? Welcome to prime time. Welcome to prime time. Wait, at the end? Yeah, yeah. W- welcome to prime time. Live? Oh, that's <laughs> <fine>. <laughs> so boring. How would you want to die in a horror movie? Oh wow! I mean, I was stabbed. Time. Oh. <laughs> you you did very well you though. Yeah, yeah, you almost finished them all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what else was there? Out of curiosity. No, fine. There's four more. Um, if you could make any horror movie come to life, uh, which would it be? Ooh, huh. that's wow! Come to life, like for real? Yeah. I don't know. There's so many. I mean, I think about something like Godzilla. Mm-hmm. You know, or any any of of yeah, the Terminator. Oh, Oof. yeah. The Terminator, yes. She wants Arnold coming uh, She wants her. Arnold coming out <laughs> And I, I want to be I'll Linda be Hamilton in part two in Terminator 2. There you go, know. yeah. I have ultimate Scream Queen in your choice. Who is it? Uh, me. <laughs> there, there it is. <laughs> Final girl of choice. Oh, that's easy. Amy Steele. Ah, very uh, nice. There yes. it is. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really, 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 really loyal. Yeah. To Amy Steele as a great she, girl. She she is my favorite. Oh yeah, um, mine as well. As we talked before, because she got into the psyche of Jason. You know, no other final girl really did that. Yeah, and also she just she played it very smart. Yeah. You know, exactly. and I yep. really like that about her. Yeah. You know, she killed. You know, Amy Steele killed Jason and taught Howie Mandel to walk like a man. You ever see that classic? <laughs> yeah. Classic 80s movie. Love and, it. And finally, your horror movie crush. <laughs> we can't say it. I put her on the spot. If you, listen, if you want to leave it blank, it's fine. I'm not going to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I met Jack Nicholson at oh, wow. a party oh, man. some years ago. We were, my husband and I were at a party at Vetus Gerolitis' house, God rest his soul, the tennis player. And McEnroe was there and Tatum O'Neill was there. And Jack Nicholson, my crush, uh, he was there. And my husband dared me to go say hello to him. And he was sitting at the bar, of course, with a cocktail in his hand. (laughs) And I walked over to him with my glass of white wine in my hand, you know, and I said, I said, hi, Mr. Nicholson. I just wanted to just come over and say hi to you on a dare from my husband. And he looked at me, you know, with those eyes. And, goes, mm. 
I was wondering when you were going to come over here and see. Uh, now, I picture him wearing sunglasses <laughs> and lowering them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so he did have the sunglasses on and he did lower them. Yeah. That is so awesome. That was just a really cool uh, moment in my life because I yeah. did have a crush. He, on he, him. he probably saw neighbors and saw the edible panties. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So um, getting back to conventions really quick, have you ever had anyone like a funny moment, like from like a, like a fan, like wanting to sign something or just like a memorable moment? Um, I did have somebody bring me a pair of brown underwears. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was appalled. I was shocked and I almost, I almost keeled over laughing so hard. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah. They're probably, and did you end up signing them? I did. Nice. I they're probably, did. they're probably in a shadow box, you know? <laughs> I was, I was thinking about that. You know, it's funny because I've been going online and I've been, because I thought, you know, Warrington and I talk about bringing stuff, you know, to whenever conventions start up again. And I know he's done a few already, some socially distant um, conventions. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has, you know, stuff that he brings, machetes and things like that. Um, but I went online to look to see if I could find brown, silky underwears. Mm -hmm. And I did find a pair. The only thing is that they do have some lace on them. Okay. And mine didn't have lace on them. Right. But I'm wondering, should I get them anyway? Just because they're brown? It's, and it's That would be awesome. Um, you know what? I did see that you do sign. And I think you had this made. Was like a cartoon version of yourself on the on your car. I didn't have that made. Oh, you didn't? Oh, someone okay. Someone on Instagram who does, who does artwork takes his favorite actresses his favorite movie actresses and he does these beautiful you know pop art things with them and he's done i think three of me three or four of me oh really i've only oh, seen yeah. that one i'll have to look for if you want to send them to me now do you do you take them to the conventions with you and sign them or yeah i do i do okay. he did another one of me um uh, for uh, Halloween, um, or was it for my birthday? He did another one, and I'm going to make a copy of that one, too. And I, he awesome. gave me the rights to do that. Oh, that's cool. Permission yeah, because I, I that's my favorite one I saw of you on the car. Like that's, It reminds I thought it was actually, like, going to be in a video game. That's how cool it was, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I would love to get a poster. I've had a few requests for a poster, so I might just do maybe three or four or five posters and bring them with me and you know if anybody not huge posters I mean, you, know. you know what another idea is like adrian king does she made a copy of her script and does sell oh, signed nice. copies of that you know yeah. obviously it's a little bit more to do that but the fans would the fans would buy that in a heart 100 percent. yeah yeah i don't know if i i don't you know it's so funny i you know you never think that it's gonna be big like this i mean the closest thing i have is this photo album you know i don't but really that's even still something cool that's, to yeah. kind of like make copies of those photos and just sh show the fans you know like yeah that'd be something cool because i i lent the photo album to, um a couple of times and there are pictures missing ah uh, so yeah kind of a bummer. yeah no good yeah. yeah but yeah that'd be an awesome fun idea just make i want to let you know photos I want to let you know, Miss Taylor, uh, in light of the brown underwear, what I'm doing right now, I'm making a donation to Victoria's Secret. Uh, <laughs> we we are going to try to get you a line of brown underwear from Vicky's. <laughs> we call them the Vickies. Yeah. Yeah. Vicky's, Vicky's. Yeah. Vicky's, Vicky's. There it is. <laughs> All right. Um, do you want to do the final question, Jimmy? I got you. So last question here, Miss Taylor. What advice would 2021 – Miss Lauren Marie Taylor, give 1981, Miss Lauren Marie Taylor. Oh, wow. Um, my dog is looking at me like this is like, you know, world peace question or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you better say the right thing. You would adopt a do another dog. I would, um, I, yeah, I would definitely tell myself not to think that you're second best because I always thought I was. Mm. Oh, no, negative right here. Come on, you're our favorite. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank That's you. That's it, 100%. Yeah, and thank you. And I really, I really got to say, I really appreciate you guys. And I really, I really just appreciate, you know, all of y'all's support and everything. It's just, it's really meant a lot to me, especially, you know, being quarantined all year and, you know, not working or anything like that. It's just been really great to meet so many people through social media, you know, and do things like this with you guys. I really appreciate it. And it does, it, it, it tells that 1981 Lauren Marie Taylor you know, why did you think that? Why did you think that you were not as good as this person? You know, always comparing yourself. So that's what I would say 
to anybody, you know, starting out or even just looking to pursue their dreams is just not to underestimate yourself, to really believe in yourself, you know, and not spend a lifetime always looking behind and thinking, oh, she's better. She's better. You know, listen, that, that was nice. Uh, Ms. Taylor, I want to thank you actually for taking the time to come on like a podcast, a vlog, whatever you want to call it with these guys right here. I mean, Jimmy J, Sat Jersey Slash. I mean, who are we? Come on. I appreciate you very much, honestly, uh, joining us today. Um, and I want to give you the floor right now. If there's anything you want to plug, any upcoming uh, events that or conventions or something that you're going to be at and social media links you want to get out there, now's the time. The floor is yours. Uh, well, gosh. Well, I'm on Instagram. I don't really go on Facebook a whole lot. Um, uh, but I'm on Instagram, and it's just my name, Lauren Marie Taylor, with the number one behind it. Uh, Cause I'm number one. No, that's right. <laughs> I'm not saying that's the number one. Uh, so there's, uh, there's that. Um, um, I, I don't have my calendar in front of me, so you might be able to know the dates better uh, for the fan film. Of course, his, okay. his yep. name, his, his name was Jason. Jason. Yes, June, June 12th. Uh, is Jason, yeah. right? Not was, but is. Is. Yeah. His name yes. is Jason. Uh, yeah. So I'll be going to that big shindig. Uh, and I think it's in June in New Jersey. So yep. look for that. Um, as of this chit chat, I'm not confirmed for Monster Mania down at, near Cherry Hill, but I might be going to that. I would check back on social media to see if that's definitely happening or not. But I'm definitely going down to Atlanta for the big one um, at the end of eh, the end of August. Let's Days see. Of Days, of Days of the Dead. Days of the Dead. Dead. Yeah. Yeah. August twenty yeah. seventh to the twenty ninth yes. yeah. for the yeah. Friday thirteenth part two reunion. And let's see. Here is there you are. Oh, you are oh, the look at you are the cover girl for their uh, photo. Now, yeah. I, I, I always liked that sweater. You know, oh, it, didn't, no. it, it didn't go well with the brown panties, but I liked it. <laughs> no, dude, can I wear it for you? Christmas? No, that sweater. My dog is like, what's the matter? That sweater was so itchy, uncomfortable. I'm not going to. Well, lie. I'm sure. Yeah, well, I was like this. <laughs> like, stop. You're not supposed to have scratches all over you. Stop it. And I'm like, OK, OK, I'll stop. <laughs> Miss Taylor, thank you once again for taking the time. Folks, here she is, Miss Lauren Marie Taylor. This is a Patreon exclusive interview, Hard 365. I am the host that covers the most, Jimmy J, alongside with the South Jersey Slasher. You know where to find us, patreon.com slash Jimmy J Entertainment. I appreciate everybody out there, all the support, and of course, the support from this young lady right here, Miss Lauren Marie Taylor. It's been a blessing, Lauren. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>